really hard to do things. If you would like, Mr. Paris, um, if you would make me the co-host, I can let people in if they come late. That would be super awesome. So if you click on my name, you can make you. co-host and I can... Um, yeah, it's just my cursor that's not, that's not cooperating <laughs> with me, but I'll get to you and there you are. Yeah. The, Changing you to the meeting host, but let's just hope that works. Okay, cool. At some point. Yep. All right, so Ms. Parks, if it stops recording, although I think it's still recording, so I think we're okay. All right, and if you'll just keep an eye on the, um, the waiting room. I certainly can. That would be awesome. All right, so about, I think it was 2018, the class of 2018, we sat down and we asked them to give you advice uh, for incoming freshmen. Like, what would it be if you knew now, what you knew then? And 2018 was a big year for us, and we hope to have an equally big year this year. Uh, but those kids went through a lot of stuff. We took a one act and a main stage to state at the same time, which very few high schools can do. Uh, but we asked them to give some advice to freshmen, and here it is. Mr. Paris, if you mute yourself, we cannot hear the sound. It would help. Yeah. So I encourage everyone to join clubs, join sports, and be an active member in theater. But also remember that just because you're super passionate about one thing doesn't mean that you should slack in other things. You need to be able to be a well-rounded student, but have enough passion in all those things. Throw out those monologues. That's a good amount. But I think it's important to know that not everything is about getting into that big name college or that big name university. If you have a dream and you think you can do it, you think you can follow it, then I think you should just go ahead and follow it. You really don't know what's going on in everyone's lives. So theater could be competitive. Just remember that everybody's here to do what they want to do. They love theater. So just make sure that um, you treat everyone with respect and um, just work hard because hard work pays off. My best advice would be to always have a great attitude because it'll take you really far say that high school is not the end all be all so if you have a bad day it's not the end of the world and also don't cry on the first day of school because you'll never live it down <laughs> <laughs> work hard at the beginning so that way you have time to sit back and enjoy high school be confident in who you are as a person and that matters with anything with academics with making new friends be a well-rounded person, uh, explore your other interests because that will inform you as an artist and as an actor. And so the more you do that, it, you just become a better person. The best advice I would give my freshman self is that grades matter. Always volunteer first for performances. Keep a positive attitude. Be on time um, because those extra minutes of sleep aren't worth it, trust me. And do not bring Starbucks in Mr. Paris's class. It's okay if you discover that your passion isn't everyone else's. At the end of the day, nobody's gonna care um, how stupid you look on stage. Um, being a goofball got me somewhere. So. I know we hear it from everyone that everything is an audition, but here at Blake, everything really is an audition. You need to make sure that you treat everyone right. You need to make sure that you work your way up in correct ways and just make sure you're treating everything like an audition. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 I'm ready. If you truly want to do this, then you need to work as hard as possible because it will not be handed to you. But you should also remember that you love it, and so you should enjoy it. My 
just academic advice would be that the best schools for theater are the best schools academically. So know kind of what your track is going to be and know that if you want to go to school for theater, you have to keep your grades up. Test scores don't define you. Stay ahead of the work. Like instead of waiting for like the next assignment to come and actually look for the next assignment, ask for the next assignment so that you'll be ahead. Um, I think it's very hard if uh, to stay like on top of your academics while you're putting your whole heart and soul into a theater program and something totally different. So I think it's important to like stay on top of everything and balance everything. Get hope done early. And I'd also say um, if you take any other virtual school classes, don't procrastinate with them because they're a pain in the butt to finish last minute. Oh my goodness. Make sure you start early because you don't want to be the senior behind everyone else. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> from day one figure out a plan for your four years because I didn't know what an AP class was until my sophomore year I feel like if I had, had all the information at the beginning I would have done a lot better than I did in high school so figure out a plan for your four years when you get here don't take a bunch of AP classes just because your friends are taking them not, not, not. <laughs> I would say that if like all your friends are doing really hard AP work, um, it's just like really hard classes, don't feel pressured because everyone else is doing it. Everybody's at their own pace and just choose what class is best for you. Grades matter. That's really important. You need to focus on your grades from freshman year and not just start focusing junior year because at that point it's too late. Also take the SAT and the ACT as many times as possible and start early on that as well too. It's okay if you don't take every AP class that you're still going to go to college and you'll still get accepted. If you want to learn, you will learn. I think handling rejection is actually one of the biggest lessons that I've learned here at Blake because I've learned that if you don't get that lead or you don't get that big um, shining role that you wanted, you have a chance to shine in the minor supporting roles. And so if you don't get that part that you wanted, then you need to take the part that you get and you need to do what you can with it to make sure that you're known and that you shine in the role. There's always other opportunities here. There's always another show. There's always another coffee house or something. There's always another performance. So just work hard for that next opportunity. With rejection, just don't take anything personally. I promise that it's not you specifically. There's always gonna be someone that's better than you, no matter what it is, whether it's sports, whether it's leadership, whether it's theater, there's always gonna be someone that can do it better than you, and I know that sounds really bad. But just know that rejection is a part of becoming who you are and taking that criticism in and realizing, okay, next time I do it, how am I gonna do it better? It's okay to feel sad, but just know that it'll be over in a couple of months and then your next opportunity will come. And trust me, an opportunity will come along. Just as long as you keep working at it and keep a positive attitude. Something that I wish that I had realized earlier is that not every part is right for me. And if you're not getting cast, but you still like what you're doing, then you know you're doing it for the right reasons. There are always other opportunities. I just kind of have to get over it and wait for the next one. That's how it is. I handle rejection by trying to look at things objectively because that person got the role for a reason and it's not their fault. So they probably have something that you can take from and learn from and use it to your advantage later on in other auditions. So be a good sport, congratulate them, and learn from them. Um, I would say just move on and keep working hard because the harder you work, the more opportunities will come your way. I said it earlier, but hard work really pays off, so maybe you didn't get the role or um, not have any lines in any shows ever, but you might end up getting into colleges, and so just remember that. Um, keep working hard. Yes, um, always ask uh, what you could have done better, because uh, the directors here will give you that advice in return, and just take that and learn from it. Something my mom was really good at was letting me do this process on my own and being my cheerleader instead of letting me have everything, just give it to me. 
mama bear does not always have to come out. You have to be able to trust your kids and know that if they need to put themselves out there and talk to a teacher, talk to a student about an issue that's coming, give them advice, but you don't have to be the one to call that teacher and yell. Um, maybe to make friends with more theater parents and not be mean all the time. Or, or mean sometimes. <laughs> it's not that deep, really. Um, there's always other opportunities for them, and it's important to give them space to learn and grow, especially at a place like Blue. Trust your kid that they would ask questions themselves and not, you don't have to get involved if it's not necessary. Something my parents did well was that they supported me in what I chose to do, and they didn't push me to do anything that I didn't think was right for me. And I think that's a big part of high school is making your own decisions and finding out what's right for you to do. Um, be there to support your student. I mean, don't like be so overbearing, but once in a while just check in. Theater can be really stressful and a lot of work, so just make sure your child's doing alright. You should know that your kids are sorry about how much money you're spending on Blake Theater. <laughs> I think parents need to start learning to let their child handle things on their own, and if there is a problem or there's something that you want to bring up or bring to the table, do it yourself. Don't let your parent email that teacher or don't let your parent complain for you. Make sure you're handling everything yourself and being as mature about the situation as possible. Let your kids figure out things on their own. High school's about growing up and if you're holding them down, your kids aren't gonna grow up. Remember that when your child doesn't get the part, it's not the end of the world. It is time for them to stand on their own. <laughs> Uh, my best advice for parents is to retain some of your humility because sometimes when you don't, it permeates your child and it can make them very unpleasant to be around. My advice for incoming parents would be to read the handbook because I promise the answers are always in there. Anything else you want to add? No. Start over. I said, um, that just was so touch exciting. Touch with me, just keep up. <laughs> grades matter. Start over from here. Awesome. I hated that. Can I please do that again? <laughs> the best advice I would give to my freshman self is that grades matter. <laughs> um, you're going to look like crap by the end of senior year, so um, we'll start now. <laughs> the best advice I would give to my... Stop. All right, so some of the things uh, that they mentioned we'll be talking about a little bit later on, but um, that video is also available on our website. It's www.blaketheater.com. And uh, I encourage you to watch it kind of over and kind of listen. That advice is actually coming from students. It was unprompted. And there's some things that, you know, as a teacher, I agree with and some things that I would couch a little bit different, but those kids went through four years 100% of the students who were on that video who chose to go into the performing arts um, made it into one of the colleges of their choice. So they have pretty good advice for your student. Um, and, but we'll talk a little bit about that later on moving into it. But the first thing I want to share with you is our mission at uh, Blake Theater. And our mission statement is a little lengthy, um, but I think it's important to know kind of why we have the program the way it is and how it's designed. But uh, Blake Theater is dedicated to providing a highly structured training in theatrical arts to promising Hillsborough County high school students, and this is important, by preparing performers, technicians, and costumers for the demanding expectations of the secondary and professional markets through a program of experiential learning, rigorous scholarship, professional training, and artistic discipline. We're a little bit different than a traditional high school theater program in that our goal is to educate them in what it will take to become a professional theater artist and move on either straight into the profession or onto the secondary level. Um, some students will choose to not pursue that, but we also find that valuable because what we're doing is we're saying, this is what your life will be like once you graduate from high school, if you choose to go on into theater as a career. And we find it valuable for them to learn that now this 
is for them or it's not for them. Instead of going on the college and, and spending $60,000 to then understand that the career in theater is not for them. Um, and a few things just to point out, it's highlighted here on the screen. Hopefully you can all see it. Um, but it is a training program. So we approach theater, costume, and technical theater a little bit differently in that uh, our program is designed from a professional standpoint. The way that we design our classes, the way we structure our curriculum is all based on professional training. Um, and it's done through experience in creating costumes, experience in building sets, in designing lighting. Academics are also part of that. Scholarship is expected of them. As a matter of fact, when a student is cast in a show, I do a weekly academic assessment of them. And if they are at below a C average in, a, in any class for two weeks, they are removed from rehearsal and anything they miss in rehearsal, they are not included in. So let's say we're blocking the first act of a show. If they can't maintain a C or better average in their academic classes, they're removed from rehearsal and they can't come back until they bring that grade up. Uh, and if they're not blocked into the second act, they will only appear in the first act of the show. Uh, but that's to make sure that they understand that scholarship is just as important as um, the theater training that we offer. But on the flip side, they're choosing Blake High School as a choice school. They've, they've auditioned for a spot and taken a spot that could have been offered to someone else. And so the theater class is also just as important. We often get this comment from students or parents that it's just a theater class, but here we're not. We are the reason they are at Blake High School. So if they can't keep up in both scholarship academic courses and in theater classes, then perhaps we need to talk about a change of venue for them and they might be more successful. We also offer professional training and discipline. Discipline is a huge thing for me and the rest of the faculty. Uh, there are expectations that they will take part in every aspect of theater from the great things and the spotlight um, issues of being a head designer or being a lead in a show, but also to sweeping the stage when it's called for. Kids will be sweeping stages, they will be moving chairs, they will do everything that I've had to do growing up in the theater. I've been at this for 30 years, um, and I can say that because I'm super old now. And um, we believe that students should learn how to do everything to make them as marketable as possible and to make them uh, usable in the theater industry. I've been, I've been doing what I do for a very long time and I've had to do a lot of sweeping. I've had to do a lot of moving of sets. And it's only now that I'm a little bit older that I don't have to do those things quite so much anymore. So this is kind of what we went over a little bit, but our goal is to get your kids where they want to go. All those kids you saw from 2018, I am still in touch with, I keep up with them. Uh, and it just, it warms my heart to watch them in this video because I know where they've gone now. And it's because they've successfully made it through the four years. Not all of them have gone into performing. Some of them have gone into other fields completely different, but their training at Blake Theater will get them to a lot of different places. It teaches them how to think outside the box. It teaches them how to collaborate. It teaches them how to speak in front of people. It teaches them how to um, empathize with others and, 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 and think about where other people are coming from. And so they get a lot out of theater besides just learning how to perform. And so it does open the world up to different careers. And so that's one of our goals as well. In professional training, here are the things that we focus on. One is attitude. Sometimes we have students that are a big fish in a middle school pond. And at Blake High School, we don't have a lot of room for attitude. It will affect a lot of things. Some students have to come in realizing that they may know a lot from where they're at, but we have to start from zero to make sure that we break those habits. And so we ask every student to always have a positive attitude, even if they have misgivings about what they're asked to do, they can ask those questions, but they should ask those questions without the rolling of the eyes or ignoring what we say, because sometimes safety is an issue there. And we wanna make sure that every student is on the same page. And so your attitude towards your work kids will affect how you may or may not be used in our shows or even in the classroom. Your attitude is everything. Every student is expected to work to the fullest potential they have. Not every student will be on the same level, but work ethic is important. If you're in a class and you don't put forth your best effort in class, we won't trust you to put forth your best effort uh, in a show. And shows are extracurricular. There is no requirement that we put a student in a show. 
there is a promise we make to students that if they work hard and they do well in class, if they show a positive attitude, if they attend school and they audition every single time, I will make sure that they get into a show. It may not be every show, but I will make sure any student that checks off all those boxes that they will get the experience they're looking for. The fourth thing on here is rejection. Rejection, unfortunately, is a very, very difficult part of theater training. And parents, this is actually the hardest part for you. It is extremely hard to see your child rejected for a part probably more than once, and they are upset and they will oftentimes cry. But rejection is what, is what is part of theater training. I've been a professional artist since I was 18. And I have been successful in, in getting parts enough to pay my bills, pay my rent. I've had to travel to some of those parts. Some of them have been very easy to get. Some of them have been difficult to get. But I've been rejected more times than I have been accepted into a show. And that's the nature of the beast. Here is where they need to learn about rejection. And so it's, I think it, parents, the parent's role, which we'll get deeper into later on, is to support your kids, let them know that you understand how they feel, but rejection is a part of professional training and they will get rejection. And that is the toughest, toughest part. I hate casting more than anything, although I spent 10 years as a casting director in New York City but I don't have a personal relationship with those actors because they're professionals. Here, I have a personal relationship with kids. And so it's very, very hard to not put everyone in every role, but that is impossible. Uh, and, and we'll talk a little bit more about numbers later on. We do make sure that there's opportunity for every class every year to do something. Our season though, our, our main season of large shows, it is impossible to get every kid in. And so there are some things they need to do to make sure they get in there but they do need to learn rejection as well. The next part of this you see down on the, um, and, I, and I hate that you're staring um, just at a PowerPoint. It's not very <laughs> exciting, but student growth. A lot of that is we are trying to teach the kids how to become artists that are self-sufficient, advocate for themselves. And so self-advocacy is something we always talk about. A lot of times in that ninth grade year, parents will email me with questions that their students should be asking. So most often, if you email me and it's a question I think your student can ask me face to face, I will simply send you the nicest email possible and say, please have little Susie come talk to me face to face. Because when you allow your student to avoid talking to me, that becomes a habit for them. And so then they, they grow a fear of talking to people who are in the industry. And so part of what we want to teach is that self-advocacy. Advocacy. Coming to me, talking to me or Miss Parks or Miss Garza, uh, and, and asking for what it is they want or whatever their question is. Uh, and so we do, that is a huge part of what we try to teach both parents and students uh, that self-advocacy is part of this deal. The second thing is if you allow your students to uh, avoid talking to the teacher, then we can't develop a relationship with them, a relationship with the parents. And that's great. I want to have a relationship with parents as does the rest of the faculty. However, if you allow your student to avoid talking to me, we will never have the relationship we're looking for. And I'm sure most of you have heard the stories. I can be a little intimidating. I know sitting here in my, my dining room with my <clears throat> new tan from spending the day at the beach uh, makes it seem like I'm super friendly. And I am, but I'm also very, I have huge expectations for kids and that can be a little intimidating for kids. But the more they talk to me and the better our relationship is, the better off we will be. And so I encourage parents to encourage their kids to talk to us first. And that way we can have an understanding. And, and of course, the relationship with the parents is always available, but we like to take that first step. Um, and we are always available for parents to email us um, and, and ask us questions. And I do have a great example that will come up later on, but the student teacher relationship is what we're really going for here. On the artistic side, we have expectations and we've talked a little bit about this, but all students who are in a magnet program have academic requirements. They must maintain an average of B or better in their artistic classes, and they must maintain an average of C or better in their academic requirements, which is why we have that, we, um, that weekly check. And I check every, it used to be EDSB, but now I guess it's Canvas. I check EDSB regularly for students that are falling behind. Um, oftentimes we are looking at their graduation requirements. Every year we have one or two students who have focused so much on the arts 
that they've left something else behind academically and they're in danger of not graduating, they will be removed from all of the artistic extracurriculars and we will let them and help them focus on their academics, but we don't want it to get to that point. Attendance is important. Um, there will be a little bit more that we'll talk about rehearsal, but this is attendance in class. All of our classes are experiential. If they're not in class, they're not learning. More often than not, especially in the acting program, students are tied to another student for scene work or ensemble work. And if they don't show up, the other person, the other students or the group of students can't rehearse in the same way. So attendance is expected. If you don't attend school, there's no way we can expect you to attend rehearsals. And if you miss one rehearsal, you are out. Now, of course, there are exceptions for every rule and we, we, we ask first why they miss these sorts of things, but attendance is important uh, as, and being on time. And we will certainly email parents if there's issues there with attendance just to see what's up. We always ask first before we drop the hammer on anybody. We're not like that, but um, we like to start off the year with that expectation that you will attend school every day humanly possible. Now, a lot of parents will email me and say, my, parent, my student's not going to be in school today. That's appreciated, but it's not necessary. We will, like, it, it only becomes an issue if it's an ongoing problem. Every student and parent must sign a participation contract and you will get that at some point either at our drive through welcome orientation or we'll send it out on the first day of class, but you can't be a designer or you can't be an actor in a show without the participation contract and it outlines all the expectations of rehearsal. And the reason why we can have these expectations for rehearsal is because it is not tied to your academic grade in your class. For performers especially, the only, the only way I have to have them work hard in a show is they could lose that opportunity. If they're taken out of a show, it doesn't affect their grade, but we have, to, we have to manage kids. We have to get them to show up for rehearsals so that we have a successful production so that they're learning as much as they can. But if uh, they don't know what the expectations are, and if the parents don't know what the expectations are, then we find that we're not nearly as successful as we would like to be. So you, um, auditioning is not a requirement. It's, it is something we give you because we're in this program. So if you find that you can't adhere to the participation contract, you don't have to audition for a show. You can simply take the classes in the school and you'll learn just as much as everyone else. You just won't have the experiences that everyone's having. When you get to a show, as I said before, anybody who auditions every time and they work hard in school, uh, we will find a place for them at some point. Uh, so we expect everyone to audition as much as possible, but it is not required. But once you accept a show role, we expect that you will work on any aspect of the show that we need people to work on. I have a saying that everyone works. So one of the things we do is we strike after every show. And what strike means is we take apart the set, we take down the lights, we hang the costumes or put, store the costumes away. Anything we have to do to get the theater back to the way it was before the show started, and everyone in the show is required to attend strike. If you don't attend strike and there's no outstanding reason for it, you'll be put on artistic probation for the program. And artistic probation means several of these infractions and there's a whole, a whole host of uh, steps we take for it, but it could lead to your removal from the theater program. And we don't wanna do that. So we make sure that everyone has the information up front, um, but everyone works. So at strike, if I see a student sitting by the side, I'll assign them a job and hopefully they'll get up and do it. Every semester we have something called juries and juries are a way of making sure every student is making artistic progress, either in costuming, technical theater or performance. Uh, and it is part of their midterm or final exam grade. Everyone must do a jury. The only way that a, a jury puts you in danger is if you score too low. If you score low, we put you on artistic probation and we talk about ways that you can improve and we work to improve you. Our goal is to keep as many students in the program as possible and not to get them out, but artistic probation is a way of warning everyone that there is some growth that's not happening there. Cell phones are a big one for parents and students. We often have parents who will text their kids in the middle of class or call their kids in the middle of class and we ask that you not do that. We have a phone number for Blake Theater. It's on our website. And so I encourage you to put it into your phone. If you need to get in touch with your kids, feel free to text that number. Someone will get it within a few minutes. And if it's a super emergency, call the school. Because parents, I know that every child out there is an angel 
and would never do this, but believe it or not, there have been one or two students who'll be texting in class and we ask them, who are you texting? And they will say mom, because they will have changed a contact in their phone to say mom. So uh, we have a process for cell phones. We have a place that cell phones can be stored and charged during class. They can hang them up, they can charge them. So in between classes, they can respond to any text from friends or parents or what have you. Uh, if a child is on the phone in class, I simply ask them to hand me their phone and it is returned at the end of class if they just hand me the phone. If they refuse to hand me the, class, the phone during class, then the phone is going to be taken, but um, some repercussions such as referrals to the office and things like that will happen. I've never had a student tell me they don't want to give me their phone because it's really simple. I don't make a big deal out of it. The rest of the teachers don't make a big deal. We simply take their phone, put it on our desk so it's not a distraction. And at the end of class, we hand it back and they go on their way. And so really that's the best way to handle it. But we do ask parents to help us out with that. If you find that your children are texting or calling people during class, or if you have an emergency, we ask that you contact us. Social media, we are big fans of social media because it's how we get the word out a lot of times. However, every student has an expectation that they and parents, as a matter of fact, have an expectation that social media won't be used to degrade others to take the program down or talk bad about the program. And I will tell you, both students and parents, when you do that, someone will tell on you. I had a student last year who took um, a, a picture of a set we created. He photoshopped it to make something that was racially motivated. I don't follow my students. I didn't know about it, but another student brought it to my attention and that student was removed from any other pro uh, production for the rest of the year. Someone will always let you know. Parents, when it comes to you, I understand parents get frustrated. I understand that there are a lot of things that they would like to see different. We are not perfect, although we, are, we strive to be as perfect as possible and we are really, really good at what we do. However, it's a new world for a lot of people. So sometimes parents want to bash the program on social media. And so generally what happens is another parent will tell on you. It's just the way it works. Um, a lot of times they think maybe it's going to take, you know, it's going to sway our casting decisions, which it doesn't. However, you're not benefiting the program. So when you post on social media, something you dislike about Blake High School, something you dislike about Blake Theater, what happens there is it affects the program and it affects the program that your student is in. A much better way to handle that is to one, either not post on social media or email me directly with your concerns and we can hash them out. If you post on social media, there's nothing we can do about it. But as soon as I find out, I get on the phone, I will call you and make sure that we can handle whatever challenges you're finding with the program. But I just want you to know by doing any kind of negative publicity on Blake Theater and your child is going to stay in the program, you're harming the, ch the program that your child is in. And so that's the negative part of that. It, it doesn't help us get any more donations from people. It sometimes um, persuades some students to maybe reconsider what they're auditioning for. And again, there's going to be things you don't disagree with, but most of what you aren't going to disagree with is professional theater. And that's what we're talking about here. Lastly, it's food and drink, and this is mostly for students. We don't allow food and drinks in any of our facilities. My first period is notorious, and I'm sure Ms. Parks can agree. The kids walk in, it's my directing class, but the kids walk in with their Starbucks and they wanna sip it throughout class. And I, no one loves Starbucks more than I do. I'll make sure every parent has my order. So if you wanna grab one for me on the way, that's totally fine. But I have a table set aside that the kids have to put food and drink in. And the reason we, we have this is if you're in the costume class and you have food and drink in there, not only does it encourage rodents and pests, but it also can be spilled on fabric. It can ruin some things that we do. And so we're really trying to protect the money that we put in to our programs. So speaking of money right now, food and drink is a big, uh, big no-no. So we make sure that no food and drink is allowed in the classes. And if it is brought in, we don't make them throw it away. We don't want to waste that money, but we do make them set it aside. Uh, but because you're not going to get the welcome picnic that we normally have, I would like to talk about money really quick since I brought it up. Our program is 100% funded by us. The county does not give us any money. They don't give any theater program in any school any money. Even though we're a magnet school, the only thing that they give us, which is a benefit, is our facilities. And we make sure that we have the best teachers available in the county. And you have the best faculty here. But theater takes money. Our budget ranges somewhere between sixty-five dollars and $100,000 a year. 
And all of that has to be raised by us. So we'll get into how we raise money a little bit later or what your opportunities are to help us with that. But we try not to overburden parents, but things cost money. And um, so keep that on your radar and make sure that you're joining us on social media on either our Facebook page, our parent Facebook page, Instagram, and we'll talk about uh, an app called Band a little bit later on. Scholarship, I'm gonna brush through this because we've, we've talked about it a lot, but participation is required in every class. You can't be in a theater class and not participate. That is the number one thing. We have participation grades in every class. That is the thing that will bring your grade down easiest and quickest. Every kid will get criticism and instruction. So this is where a lot of the, the hard feelings will come in. Everyone loves to get um, some sort of positive feedback. And so we do provide that. But generally what kids hear is the criticism. And they will get a lot of criticism because you can't improve what you don't know. And so at Blake Theater, every design, every performance gets critiqued by the student and by the students. We train our students how to critique one another so that it, it, hit home, it hits home a little bit lighter than normal. However, your kids are gonna get criticism and they need to know how to deal with that and we will coach them in that. And so it's a little bit easier in freshman year, but man, by that senior year, those kids skin is like tough as nails. And so they will absolutely know how to take that on. Investment in the process. This is where we often fall short. And there's a saying that we have, and you see it right below that, if we want it more than you do, meaning if the teachers want it more than the student does, there's a problem. Uh, we sometimes will have parents who will come to us and say, my student just wants it so bad, but their, their actual production in the class doesn't show the same thing. There's a disconnect. Oftentimes parents want it more than the student does. And so we need to discuss that kind of dichotomy and like what it is that the real problem is. You know, are they not feeling prepared? Are they nervous? Is there something we need to work through? But many times students have decided that theater's not for them they're still in our program and they still get grades. And so we have to kind of work through that. There's a lot of things we can do. Um, a few years ago, I had a student who decided she wasn't going to theater, she wanted to be a baker. And I appreciate that, it's still an artistic discipline and I love the fact she wants to be a baker. So we would adjust some of the projects she had to kind of focus on baking. For example, if we're doing character analysis, we had her read a play and she had to bake products based on characters in that play. So there are ways to still engage kids and keep their, their imaginations engaged and their future um, plans engaged in what we do. We have a high expectation for success, meaning that whatever, I always say my dream is for the students' dreams to come true. So whatever that is, that's what we want to make happen. And we'll figure out how theater, costume, uh, technical theater can make that happen. But we do expect every student to put the best foot forward at all times. Uh, you heard in the video one kid say you're always auditioning and you are always auditioning. Everything you do, we consider in the audition process. Do you get up and move chairs when we ask? Do you sweep when we ask? That means that you, you are buying in, into the program. All right, experiential learning. This is where productions come in. So a lot of times we'll have people say productions are where you learn and that is absolutely true. If you are in a production, you're actually going to learn a lot from that experience. And so we do build in small productions in every class and every student will have that experience. But these big productions are where some parents, um, when their child is in cast, be like, if, if, my, if my child is in cast, how are they getting that experience? So productions are absolutely an opportunity to put learning into practice. Um, and company members are placed where we think they belong in their artistic development, right? If we think they can be successful, then they make it into these large scale productions. But before they're ready, we make sure they're having experiences where they can be successful because nothing's worse for a student to be placed in the wrong role, to be placed in the wrong show and fail at it because then theater becomes more of a punishment, something they don't love. And so we try to place them where we think they're going to be the, the, the most successful. Um, on the flip side of that is watching others in shows actually can help you improve. You can see where they went with a role that's different. They can, you can see where they went with a design that is different from what you had imagined. And so not being in a show and watching the show can be beneficial. So we require every student to see every main stage show. Now I'll talk a little bit later on about what's the difference between main stage shows and what we call our studio series. Um, but every main stage show, every student is required to see. Um, and here's the, here's the flip side of that where productions are where you learn. Watching others can help you grow. You do most of your learning in class, 
main stage shows are a benefit to class and it's married to class, but you're going to do all your learning of an, as being an artist in class. Um, and in, in rehearsals, there's very little actual instruction that happens in rehearsal because we have somewhere between six and 10 weeks of rehearsal. And that is all, that is all work. Um, there is some instruction that happens, but we take the lessons from class and put them in the show and students who are in a show are expected to bring the lessons from class to the show without prompting. And that's why we wait to see where they're at artistically. Um, and finally, without grasping the technique that we have in class, we're just setting up our kids for failure. So if they haven't, if they haven't grasped what we're teaching in class quite yet, we need to hold them back because it's just a recipe for disaster. All right, casting is a huge thing for parents um, and for kids. And normally at this time, we would do this whole entire puzzle and I'll kind of explain it to you. It's much less effective on Zoom than it would be in place. But we usually give every parent um, and table, we set everybody tables at our welcome picnic and we give you pieces of a puzzle. And we typically take one piece from a different puzzle and put it into your bag. And you see how you can't put a puzzle together with the incorrect pieces. The same holds true for casting. When a director, and that's me, is casting a show, I'm looking to put together a very, very specific puzzle based on my interpretation. Now, another director will have a different interpretation than I will, but when we're at Blake, we're looking for a very specific picture. Your child may be the best puzzle piece ever for the turtle puzzle you see on your screen, but if I'm making the crab puzzle, they may not fit correctly. That doesn't mean they're bad at what they do. It doesn't mean they don't belong in the program. It doesn't mean they should give up. And so what we're seeing is someone we're trying to fit into the other puzzle. And if they don't fit, it, everyone can feel it. And so what we do is we wait for the right puzzle to come along. And, this, and super effective if you were to have these puzzle pieces with you, the explanation just falls a little bit short. But that's how casting works. I often compare it to a painting. Paintings take a lot of different colors and your child may be the best puce ever, but if I don't need that color for my painting, they're not gonna have that opportunity. But when that color is needed, that will be their time to shine. So cast, that's the way casting works. Um, there's some questions here that I'm gonna skip because it had to do with the puzzle exercise and maybe at some point we'll get to do this puzzle exercise, but now you know the answers. All right, how do you cast? There are, two, uh, there are two expectations for casting that are right on the top. Are you right for the part? And can you perform the part? So there's a lot of things that are you right for the part? That could be anything from, are you, do you, are you tall enough to stand next to the lead male? Or is the lead male short enough to stand next to the lead woman? It can be things such as um, uh, the timbre of your voice. So there's lots of things that, that can get in the way of casting, uh, but, are you right for the part is the first. If we're doing hairspray and you want to play little Inez that is traditionally played by a young African-American actress and, uh, and you're a white male, that's not gonna work. You're not right for the part. And everybody can kind of clearly see that. It becomes a little more murky when um, the students don't understand like what we're looking for. So another example would be hairspray that um, unfortunately we didn't get to perform last year because of the pandemic. But when we did the casting process, we had several students who, several women who wanted to audition for the role of Tracy. And if you know the story of Hairspray at all, the story is about a plus size girl who wanted to be accepted as she was. And there's a lot of other stories that go along with it, but focusing on Tracy, it was important to me that uh, we find an actress who can fit that naturally. And we had a lot of girls that were nowhere near plus size girls that wanted to audition. They were certainly allowed to audition, but they weren't right for the part because casting a girl who's not a plus size girl in that role diminishes the story. It's exactly the opposite of the story that's being told. And so even though those girls were very, very talented, they were not right for the part. Secondly is, can you perform the part? And that's pretty easy. Can you sing the notes? If you cannot sing the notes, I cannot cast you in the role. And so that's, that's fairly easy, even though, you know, there's lots of people that can do a lot of things. It boils down to, can you actually do it? Now on the flip side, there's some smaller things that affects casting. So there's a little quote here. This is not from me. This is from a friend of mine. But if you are lucky enough to be hired for a job, you have to show up, do your job, be nice to everyone and give it 100% on the stage. That way, when you run into me, and this is not me, this, I'll tell you who this is in a second. That way, when you run into me and ask, why didn't I hire you? 
I don't have to bite my lip to keep myself from saying because you were fired from your last few jobs. Now, this came from a friend of mine who uh, is a choreographer and a director in New York, and he was in the original Cats movie playing Mr. Um, Mr. Mistopheles. And this was something that happened to him. An actor came to him um, on the streets in New York and said, hey, why didn't I get this part? But his reputation preceded him. So he wasn't going to hire him no matter how good he was because he knew that this guy did not show up for his work. So that goes on to you're always auditioning. If you don't work in class, we, don't, we can't have any expectation that you're going to work in a show. So it's very important that every moment that you're at Blake, the way you treat people is important, what you post on social media is important, and the work that you put in is important. Same thing with classroom behavior. Most of our students, when they're in a show, are backstage and there's one teacher backstage, there's one teacher in front of the house, and maybe one person in the costume room. But we need to know that students will be on their best behavior at all times without our supervision always. There's always someone there for emergencies, but when a student is standing backstage, we need to know that we can trust them to not talk. So another example of that is a student uh, who graduated last year, actually the year before. So it wasn't 2020, 2019. She was a student I've been teaching for years, up to six years at this point. I knew, her, I knew her when she was in middle school. I've been teaching forever, and I thought she was just the greatest. She looks at me as a father figure. She was just over at my house having lunch to catch up after spending a year at UCF. But the problem was, in her junior year, she couldn't stop talking backstage. So when she auditioned in her senior year for a show, I couldn't cast her in that particular show because I didn't trust that she could be quiet backstage. And so she missed out on a job no matter how much I like her, she missed out on getting that job because of her behavior backstage. Uh, work ethic, we've been over before, we expect every child to work, and then rehearsal behavior. Uh, I am one teacher, I will have up to 50 to 70 students in a large musical cast, depending on what show it is. Um, usually average is around 45 maybe. Um, but I need to know that every one of those students is focused on the process and not talking backstage, not making sure, that, making sure that they're not touching props that aren't theirs, but most importantly, making sure they're not gonna hurt themselves or someone else. So until we know that we can trust kids backstage and the rehearsal behavior is, is beyond the pale, it, we, it's hard for us to put a kid in a show if their rehearsal behavior is lacking. All right, stage parenting. Parents, this is where we come to you. And the reason we do this is not to discourage parents, but we do want to set the expectations of what your life will be like with a student at Blake Theater. So these are a few quotes that I've had from parents over the years, and I'll address them as we go. Uh, the first one is, my child works harder than anyone else in the program. Many parents will pull that out, and I will, I will let you know, we spend up to 12 hours a day with your child. I can tell you, if you want to know your child's work ethic, I can let you know what that's like, and I'll be as honest with you as I can be, but I've already been honest with your students, so they know where we sit with this. Every, I can't say every, but I would say 90% of our students work very, very hard. And so not being in the classroom, it's really difficult for you to assess that. Um, and so when we talk about things like, why isn't my child getting casting? as a conversation I should be having with your student and not really with the parent. And we'll talk about that. Uh, but these are, these are things that parents see, but the reality is they may not be working as hard as you think they'd work. Um, another complaint is some, the same people get cast all the time. It will often appear that way because one, we have a lot of juniors and seniors in the show. So when a freshman comes in, they'll see a junior in a show and they'll see them the next year in a show, but that's because they're juniors and seniors. And so that always rotates out, but the perception can be for the first two years, the same people are being cast, but that's because juniors and seniors tend to fill up most of our cast. Freshmen absolutely can get cast. I've had several freshmen in the last few shows. Many freshmen were um, in Hairspray. We had freshmen in Into the Woods. Freshmen can get cast, but the majority of our cast tends to come from juniors and seniors because they've been trained. And so they know what the expectations are and they know how to create characters that are believable. My child says, you hate him or her. And I will absolutely tell you, there's not one child that I, in my, I guess I've been teaching about 13 years now, not all at once, but about 13, 14 years of teaching. And our goal is not to hate a child, but expectations. And sometimes high expectations can seem like we don't like a student. But as I always tell students, if somebody didn't like you, they wouldn't even bother with you. And I will always bother with every kid. All of those kids uh, that were in that 2018 video 
we've had our moments with, but they were all super successful. I smile at every one of them that comes through the video. I'm still in touch with every single one of them. So when a child says that my teacher hates me, let's have a conversation about that and see what the truth really is. And it might be that I'm just trying to push them beyond where they're performing and then knowing that they can perform at a higher level than they're at. Uh, and criticism often feels like disdain. Criticism is the way we help your children grow. And so we, help, we hope to help them understand that. Um, this next one is really one of my favorite ones. It says, you think you are the gatekeepers at Broadway. We do not feel that way. And I'll tell you the situation this came from. Our shows start at seven o'clock. Our shows in every theater have a limit to the number of audience members we can admit, either because of seating, because of contracts with publishing company, but we have a certain number of tickets we can sell. We have a certain number of seats we can fill. This parent showed up at 7.30 to a show that started at seven o'clock. We were sold out and she couldn't get a seat or a ticket because we were out of space. And by fire marshal rules, we couldn't admit her to the show. So she gave us an indelicate hand gesture and said this sentence. If you want to see a child show, please be there by seven o'clock and we encourage you to make sure you buy your tickets in advance. We cannot guarantee tickets at the door, but we try to communicate it as much as possible. Um, but uh, this parent created this problem and took it out on us. And it wasn't even me that she said it to. It was a teacher who is probably the kindest person I've ever met. He's no longer at Blake High School, but he got this. Finally, it's my child deserves a part. And I, will, I want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. No student is ever entitled to a part. They have to work for it. They have to be right for the part and they must be able to sing or, or, or perform the part. No one at Blake is told they will get a part. The only guarantee I give you is if you audition every time, if you work hard in class, I will make sure that you get into a show. The one time you don't audition though, that may have been the show I could have gotten you into. You have to audition every time. So when it comes to casting, I will often ask like what you did to prepare for the role. And there's a whole list of things I ask kids, but our main stage productions, they are extracurricular. It's like a football team. Not everyone makes it on the football team. Not everyone can be a quarterback. Only one person gets to be the quarterback in our shows. Only one person gets to be a lead. Only one male, only one female lead. It is not guaranteed. Your guarantee at Blake is that you'll be educated in the finest theater education that you can get in Hillsborough County and most likely the state of Florida. We are one of the top eight programs in the state of Florida. We're really good at what we do and we want your child to be successful and we love our kids to death. My mom asked me the other day, she's like, when did you start liking kids? And I am the most protective of my students, of anybody there is out there. I will protect them against anything, but that doesn't mean they won't be criticized and that doesn't mean they always get the role they want. Some of my favorite kids never get lead roles. Uh, your child, when it comes to casting, they can ask for feedback. We no longer give feedback to parents. The reason is because parents are, are typically hurt and disappointed that their kid wasn't cast. And so we've realized by having conversation with parents is they really just want to vent. And so we will certainly let you vent, but our, our conversation needs to be an educational conversation with the student. So when a child asks for feedback, there really are two answers. You either weren't right for the part or you couldn't sing the part. And we will describe to them why they weren't right for the part or why they, you know, weren't, they couldn't sing or, or perform the part. Um, but the flip side of that is I start asking them questions. What did they do to prepare? Did you pot pick your monologue six months ago and you've been practicing or did you pick your monologue two weeks ago? If you picked your monologue two weeks ago, that's one of the reasons why you didn't get a part. You weren't prepared enough. Did you, have you worked hard in class every time? Have you taken every opportunity to perform and get better. So when I talk about that, we have studio series performances, Coffee House, our lip sync challenge. We have a show for sophomores called Death by Dessert. We have a show for freshmen called uh, Check Please. Did you work hard in all of those and try to get your name out there? Speaking of Coffee House, Coffee House is a, is a way that freshmen especially can be known to the director and to the costume designer and to all the faculty. And there's no audition there required. But if your child's not taking advantage of the, of the opportunities that are non-audition based, that should tell both the parents and the teacher that they're not wholeheartedly into this. It's an opportunity for them to show off. One of the best examples I have of that is in 2018, we brought Sideshow to State and the student that was one of the primary, I would say he's a secondary lead, 
Um, the reason he was con started to be considered for that role is because he showed up for a lip sync challenge and I had never seen him go all out like he went for that. And it made me start to think that he's a possibility for this role. Because he took advantage of that, he started to increase his chances of being cast. And he went on to be very successful. And I think he's going to Boston Conservatory next year. Um, so parent complaints about casting. These are the questions that we will ask you. When we have, when we have to have some sort of conversation, my, my first question will be, what is the resolution you're looking for? If it's some sort of explanation about what your child can do better, that's a constructive conversation that we will enter into. But if the resolution you're looking for is to put your kid in the show, that will not happen. So really think about what resolution you're looking for and let's talk about that. We're certainly open to conversation, but believe it or not, teachers get beat up a lot and we won't allow that to happen. We're in a very special school that you, you sign contracts for performances, that you understand rejection is part of it. Uh, and so a conversation that's constructive is always um, appreciated. But if the conversation is to come in and just be little teachers, uh, then we don't allow that. And then uh, the second point is the one I like to make to parents. And, and this comes from a parent at saying, well, this is just high school. And so I always like to ask parents, at what point should your child learn what this career is about? And at what point should they learn to deal with what actually happens in the real world? And I'm telling you, parents, high school is where this should happen. They should learn to deal with rejection. They should learn to uh, deal with consequences to their actions because we don't wanna send them off to the secondary or professional markets, not learning how to talk to their instructors, not learning how to deal with rejection, not learning how to deal with disappointment. So I always ask parents, when you come to discuss casting, when should they learn what rejection is? And I'm telling you, after all of my experience professionally and after all my experience educationally, now is the best time for them to learn because they have you as, back, as backup. They also have the teachers as backup. They can be disappointed, but I will comfort them in their disappointment and let them know how they can improve, but it has to be a conversation with your kid. All right. The teacher, that's us. All right, we will actually have four teachers next year. We're back up from three. We used to have four, we lost a unit, uh, but we're back and it makes our program stronger. I teach all the performance and directing classes. I'm also the artistic director of the, uh, the entire program, meaning that most of the decisions about the season come from me. Uh, many of the policies will come from a discussion between me and the, and the faculty members. Um, but I kind of oversee, like when we we're going to put our t a kid on a probation, the teachers and I will discuss if, if that's the right way to handle the situation. Um, but when it comes to Mr. Teacher or Mrs. Teacher Hates Me, um, that's kind of what we're going to get into. Uh, Miss Parks is our costume teacher. Miss Garza is our the technical theater teacher. Uh, Miss Parks will also be teaching playwriting, which I certainly encourage once they pass their freshman year to investigate that class. We're super excited about it. We'll have some tie over with the performance class uh, and we'll have a new um, a new teacher that teaches specifically dance for us which will really strengthen our program and that is Mr. McDonald that, who we'll introduce you to later. All right teacher student parent relationship. We absolutely want what's best for our students. There is and I'll say it again our dream is to make your kids dreams come true. No one loves their kids more than teachers. We're all willing to go back in the middle of a pandemic Make sure that your, your students are educated. And so we wanna make sure that you understand that we always want best what's best. But when we have a concern for a student and we share that with you, we really want you to look deep and, and believe that that is an actual concern. I had a concern for a student a little, a few years ago and I went to the parent and I said, this is my concern. And she said, absolutely, that is not my daughter. But it was, and so intervening through the, the student relationship and the parent relationship, we could have saved that kid. Um, and unfortunately it went in a different route, um, but it, it just didn't, like I, like I said, we spend up to 12 hours a day with your students, so we know a lot of what's going on and we will always come to you if we have a concern. And we don't come with you with a concern because we don't like your kid. We come with you to a concern because we, are, we care for your students. So please take a moment when we have a concern, please believe us. There's, we don't want to, we don't want to um, involve parents in really minor things when it comes to behavior. If they're talking on their cell phone, we'll try to handle that first, but that's not our big concern. Um, again, if we want it more than they do, there's a problem and we'll often talk to you about that. Um, and then finally, we can't improve talent, but we can't create it, nor can we put it to work. And there's a saying that says, 
hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And so the kid who works hard is actually going to be better off than the kid with more talent who won't work. Oftentimes our teachers have to set boundaries. And so here's where I get a little serious about our boundaries. There should only be a few ways that you contact teachers. Um, some of the parents will abuse a lot of our other means of contact, such as social media. Um, but we have lives outside of school. I often try to say that, you know, like being a teacher is my work, just like a, a plumber or a, a doctor or um, maybe, you know, someone who delivers mail, like that's their work and we go home and we have. Now, of course, those boundaries are a little bit blurred when it comes to teaching, especially a theater teacher. We have relationships that go into rehearsal or design and everything else. And so, of course, those boundaries can be expanded. However, we ask you to, um, to keep in mind that we do have lives outside of, of the school. And so when we come home, it's important that we are able to spend time with our families and not have work intervene. So the means of contact are written uh, right there. If it's an academic concern, we ask that you email the teacher through the school email. So it's the teacher's name. So it'd be sean.paris at sdhc.k12.fl.us. If it's, a, if it's a question about the program in general, as far as like the theater season or things like that, feel free to email info at blaketheater.com. Um, there's, I am not the only one that will be answering those emails, but it does, all those emails do come to my phone, but sometimes I'll have student producers answer them if they're easy, um, just so we can kind of spread the work a little bit. I have 150 students in the program, um, and so sometimes the emails can be overwhelming. Uh, and then the best resource for you is boosters at blaketheater.com. Those boosters can actually answer a lot of your questions. And if not, my booster board can get to me and ask me the questions. Then I only have five people emailing me and not 150. And the reason I had to set these, um, these boundaries is because I, I have parents email me at midnight or I'm sorry, text me at, at midnight or I have parents text me at like five in the morning. And so we do have to set some boundaries so that our teachers can have a healthy mental life as well. We also communicate everything through an app called Band. Uh, and so I do have on my phone here, and I am really hoping that you can see it when I pull it up. Um, I will hold it up and maybe Ms. Parks will chime in and say if you can see it or not, but it's an app called Band. And all you have to do is search for Blake Theater. I don't know if it's too shiny for you at the moment, uh, but hopefully if you search for Blake Theater, we send all of our announcements out on Band and you can also message us back. I will tell you, Band is not the best at sending me a push notification immediately, but at some point I'll notice and I can send you a message back through there. And that way that's an easy back and forth communication. Typically the faculty and I will look at emails or band messages. And if it's an emergency, we will absolutely get right back to you. But if it's not an emergency, we'll often wait until the next day. And sometimes we'll ask you just to have your kid come by and talk to us because your kid should be the one communicating with, with the teachers. The one thing we ask you not to do is to contact us through social, our social media um, pages that are our personal pages. Our social media, every teacher has a different social media presence. Our Blake Theater has a social media presence, but our personal social media should be looked at as an aspect of our personal life and has nothing to do with our work. So we ask that you not contact us through social media. Now we have a Blake Theater um, Facebook page and we have a Blake Theater Instagram page. We have a Blake Theater Twitter but those aren't watched all the time. So sending us a DM through Instagram, sending us a message through Messenger, through the Blake Theater, like those are probably the least likely way for us to respond quickly. So we do ask that you, actually somebody just joined band. Uh, thank you. Um, so we ask that you communicate through band and that's probably the best way or an email. Um, if you need an immediate question, band's probably the quickest, but any of those emails will work for you. Our out of school time is important. So I suggest to most faculty that we don't respond to anything that's not an emergency after about seven o'clock. Now, of course, if we're in rehearsal, that's quite all right. Um, if we're in rehearsal, especially that, those are the times when you need to contact. We have very specific rules on rehearsal and food and drink during rehearsal and when parents can come and when they can't come. Um, and we'll go over it. You'll get a whole packet of that later on. All right, parents, here are your responsibilities. Being part of this program means the parents have to be involved uh, because we have rehearsals that go until sometimes 5.30 unless it's tech week and then those rehearsals may go until eight o'clock at night and so there will be transportation issues. Um, and so make sure that uh, if your child is auditioning for a show or wants to be in crew for a show, you have to be a partner in that. Um, 
And so it's, it's important to know what that responsibility is. There are pickup times and locations. We often have um, some issues. If a student who's in a show or on crew, if the pickup time is six o'clock, because that's when rehearsal ends, if a parent's an hour late without contacting us through band or some other means, we have to look long and hard at, at if we can um, continue to work with that student after school because we have families we have to get home to or that are expecting us. We all have responsibilities at our home. And if we're an hour late coming home, it affects all our families. And so we ask that you make sure you are cognizant of pickup times. And there's nothing wrong with, with being late if you communicate with us. And I will push communication all the time. Communicate with us and everything's good. If a child's gonna miss rehearsal, we don't like it, but there better be some sort of communication as to that they're not going to be there and not you know five minutes before rehearsal starts. The location for pickup, should always be at the flagpole in front of the school. We will remind every student and every parent after rehearsals, after shows, the location of pickup, unless otherwise noted through ban for an emergency reason, is the flagpole in front of school. The reason we do that is because we wanna gather all the students in one place where we can look over them while their parents are waiting to come pick them up. Um, it's also a safe lighted place um, if our rehearsal is going late or if the show gets out. Uh, and so we require the parents pick you up there. So make sure that you know the flagpole is where you should be picking them up in front of school and make sure you're on time. Uh, we ask that every parent support the program. So if you're on social media and we have an invite to a show, please, even if your child's not in that show, please share our invite with all your friends. We realize this year might be a little different because of however we might have to produce our shows, but sharing the program not only helps us sell tickets and make some money, um, but it also makes sure that we have an audience for your kids to perform to. Now, a lot of times what will happen is um, some parents will say, well, my child's not in that show, so why should I, you know, I don't need to promote it on social media. And what I'd like for every parent to understand is the success of the program leads to the success of your child. And so if I spend money to produce a show your child's freshman year and they're not in that show, if I can't be successful in promoting that show and selling tickets and making money because we don't get money from the county, the next year it's going to suffer. And so it does affect your students. So every show needs to be promoted. All of our programs need to be promoted. We ask that you all join boosters and we'll have more information for that. Um, and that is how you can be involved and become volunteers and help us out. And then finally, and we will ask that you volunteer as much as possible. We generally, our programs, we have 150 families in our program but most of what we need is handled by maybe 10 to 12 families. And so we do ask that you, when you can, sign up for a volunteering spot. And we have someone on our boosters who's in charge of volunteers. Theater etiquette is something we teach our children, but we also need to educate our parents and our grandparents and our friends that come to the theater. Arrival on time is expected. Our shows will, no, will never start more than five minutes after unless there's some sort of backstage emergency. So if our show time is seven o'clock, we will at least start by 7.05, our goal is 7 o'clock, but sometimes we'll hear that there's traffic, but we can't hold the show more than five minutes. Even if you're my best friend or my mother loves to say this, even if my mother was to text me and she's gonna be 10 minutes late, my mother is going to miss five minutes of that show because I have 400 people in the theater waiting for me. I can't hold it for two people. So make sure you arrive on time and plan for traffic. Our house will open 30 minutes before the show starts. So if you arrive anywhere between 30 minutes before or, or later, you'll be able to get into the theater right away. We don't allow photos and videos. We understand that a lot of middle schools or other like um, non-school related programs allow photos and video. Every contract that we sign states that we will do our best to inform our audience that photos and video are not allowed. If I see a parent, or anyone videoing or taking photos during a show, I will go down during the show, approach you and ask you to please put it away. If you refuse, we'll have security called to escort you. It's that important. We could lose our license to produce shows if we are caught or if someone posts photos or videos of us. Now, I know a lot of people do it. We don't do it. Uh, and so we ask that you don't take photos or videos. We will take production photos and we normally make those available to our parents or to our students. Um, in some manner. Our students are here learning how to do things backstage, how to, how to be professionals, and so no parents are allowed backstage. Our sets are built by students, our costumes are built by students. We do have a parent here and there that will volunteer in the classroom, but we don't allow them backstage. It just has, it becomes too much of a, a liability to have people who aren't trained or who don't know the show to be backstage, but lots of places for parents to volunteer up front of house 
with concessions or tickets or selling things uh, in the lobby. The best way to stay informed is through our website. Um, to our social media actually is really the best way, but our website also has a calendar on it that is updated as soon as I post something on my phone in my own calendar, that's the Blake Theater. It is updated within 15 minutes to our blaketheater.com calendar. So we have a website, it has all the information on you. I will say it has not been updated for this next year yet. It's a long process and we will get there. Um, but the calendar is consistently updated and we'll walk you through that as quickly as possible. I know we're, we're running you know, pretty, pretty late, um, but the website is one way. Everybody will get a handbook um, at the beginning of the year. It's also available online and that will outline everything that you need to know. Everything is in that handbook. The next part about Remind, please ignore that. We have now gone to Band. So Remind is no longer with us. We use Band. You should join Band, not Remind. We'll no longer be on that. Our, first, our Facebook page, we have two different ones. How to Double Blake School of the Arts Theater Department and Blake Theater Parents and Volunteers. Everything that we need you to know will be cross-posted on Instagram, which is also a Blake Theater. It'll be posted on Instagram, Facebook, and Band. So if you're on one of those three things, you're going to get all the information we have, but you can certainly email our boosters or email us and let us know if you have any questions. Charms, um, you'll get more information on that, but Charms is primarily where your children will pay fees or registrations or any dues for thespians and that sort of thing, and you'll get more information on that, but there is a link. I'm not gonna walk you through the website, but I do ask you to go to our website and really investigate everything. It has everything you need uh, to, to make sure that you are as informed as possible. We have a place you can sign up for newsletters. The one thing I would say is students need to make sure they know how to go to student signups, which is, which we'll get to in a second. I have this automated video that's kind of showing you what, where everything is, but I'm gonna skip past it for now, but please go to Blake Theater look through everything before the school year starts so that you know where to find things when you need them. Our tickets are on there, information over programs, audition signups are on there. Most things are going to be under student signups, which you see on the right hand side, so student signups and are important links. Anything your student needs to sign up for, registrations for thespians, registration for auditions, all of that will be under student signups. I'm going to skip through the videos because I think we're running out of time. I'm sure people have a thousand questions for me. So let me just go through most of this. Um, parents, I'm going back, I'll go back to claiming memberships. Parents, we sell memberships to parents, which comes with certain perks. Uh, you'll get a whole sheet on that. And there is a video online about how to claim your, your membership. And so uh, if you decide to become a Blake Theater member in some, at some level, please look over that. It will answer every question you have unless there's some sort of technical problem. We pride ourselves on being communicative, so there is a lot of ways to find out about things that are happening, but make sure your student is sitting with you so they know how to do it. Thespian points is something else we'll talk with your kids, but it's important. Um, and then there, this is a quote that I love from Colin Powell, and this is true for our kids. A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work, and that is something we love to preach at Lake High School. So I know that was really long and I know there are a thousand questions, but that is the basics of being a theater parent. I'm going to stop sharing my screen now so I can see some faces and we will go to questions and I hope I can get through as many as I can. If you need to leave, please do so. We are recording this so we'll be able to put this and you can kind of follow up at the end. All right, so two questions. Can you hear me? We've, we've, we've done that. Uh, and see you. Yeah, I think we can. Uh, and now we fix that sound problem. So if you have questions, and I, that's all the questions I see at the moment, but maybe Ms. Parks, maybe you've had some more because you're now the host and I don't know if you get those questions. Okay, um, I'm gonna give like a minute or two, not even a minute. If you have any questions that you wanna chime in with, please put them up on the chat room. I'll answer them now, but if not, feel free to, to email us. Um, it's, I would love for you to ask questions now if you have them, that way everybody gets the benefit of your information. And for Rich Emerson, who's sitting in the car, I'm sorry you've had to sit in your car for an hour. <laughs> uh, My son has a, he has a horn clinic, so he's blasting away with a baritone inside the house. So. All right, perfect. Well, probably better than being in the car with his baritone, I'm guessing. All right. Okay, parents, we will have um, more um, information about our welcome picnic. It's, it was scheduled on the original calendar for August 1st. I find that to be unlikely. Um, that that's going to happen. It is typically we have all the parents and all the kids from all the disciplines come in. We have uh, a covered dish. Uh, Mr. Emerson, um, your child is covering her face. Is she embarrassed? Should we like work on that a little bit more? Should we continue to <laughs> like, just pick on her? Um, however, 
our picnic will probably be more of a drive through issue this year. And so it's, it's unfortunate that that's what it'll be, but we do need to get that information in your hand. And so you'll get a copy of the handbook and you'll get a copy of memberships and all the other things we do. I know we throw a lot of information at you. There's gonna be a thousand questions that you will have later on that you will still not know the answers to. Please attend our booster meetings. When we have them, we have about once a quarter. There's going to be acronyms that you have no idea what they mean. That's the biggest thing, but we will try to get you that information. Feel free to email our boosters. They will be your greatest resource because they are parents who have been through it all. Uh, and so they will make sure they do it. All right, if there are no more questions, I thank everybody for joining us. Ms. Parks, if you'll end this for everyone, um, I'll stop recording and we will see everybody when we find out how the school year is going to start. Thank you for coming.